Welcome to the first talk this morning, and uh, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, having me here and uh, for being such a great crowd. I greatly enjoyed the talks uh, on the conversation uh, over the last two days. Thank you. Uh, this morning, I want to present you a bit about uh, an extension that I wrote uh, over the last six months. Uh, that does neural machine translation, and so the idea was to have something very simple. Uh, uh, with a single click, you can uh, translate a document in Writer, uh, and we're trying to make uh, the translated document to look as good as it can based on the old document. Uh, so, if you are into corporate identity, I have a title slide for that too. Uh, and I'll tell you a bit about uh, my background because I'm uh, more coming from the neural machine translation side than from the uh, LibreOffice side. And then I'll uh, tell you a bit about uh, what's going on with the extension and how I try to uh, wrap it nicely into LibreOffice. And uh, I would hope to get some input from you uh, how to make the extension more useful uh, and how to make it. Uh, feasible for people to train their own models too. So my background is uh, uh, I did some pattern recognition way back in, the, in 2000, uh, uh, but then I moved to mathematics uh, and I spent my PhD explaining the pattern that you can see at the top right. Uh, then I did a lot of uh, insurance risk modeling, uh, and recently I moved to uh, do machine learning uh, uh, and do lots of modeling there. Uh, I have two tiny patches in LibreOffice and so those three buttons here, uh, uh, I implemented uh, the initial version of those even though... Yeah, just turn it off. The mic the microphone's broken, so sorry. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, if I'm not speaking loud enough, you will just complain, I hope. Uh, and so these three little buttons, uh, when I first made them, they were not looking nearly half as nice as they do now, but uh, this was my first uh, patch in LibreOffice, and I think you do an admirable job at making it easy to contribute a little feature like that. Okay, so. The idea is to have a very simple uh, uh, way of translating documents. So I have a sentence in English, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and the extension will provide you with a new translate menu, and you can just click on English to German, and then uh, uh, the text will be translated to German. Uh, uh, and uh, it will also get some formatting which now appears from magically, but uh, usually you have a correspondence. Uh, I should say and acknowledge that the project was funded by uh, the German Ministry of Research and Technology through the Prototype Fund. Uh, some of the uh, German guys uh, know the Prototype Fund. It's a project that uh, gives you a short-term six-month grant to work on uh, software for the public good. So uh, this extension fit in very nicely. <coughs> so the first question I thought, well, I want to do a translation function in LibreOffice. The first question I uh, uh, had was, how much of a user interface do you really want for such an extension? So on the one hand, you want to have a nice user interface. Uh, on the other hand, if you can get by with less user interface, make it more seamless if you want, uh, that's certainly an advantage. Uh, so I first researched what other people do, and on the right you can see uh, uh, how it looks like in some of the uh, Microsoft products, uh, uh, where there is a little thing on the sidebar that pops up, and the original text uh, is put at the top, and the translation suggestion is at the bottom, and then you can hit insert to replace the text. But uh, so, what is the advantage of doing it that way? And 
the only thing I could come up with when I systematically reflected this was that you can see the original text and the, uh, and the translated text at the same time because obviously if you want to edit the translated text there's a more natural place to do it than in the sidebar the natural place to edit your document would be in the document itself so this is what uh, uh, I did with, uh, with the LibreOffice extension then uh, I took the original text and just replaced it with the translated text and in order for the user to be able to see what was the original text in case uh, there's something that is not ideally translated uh, 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 there is an annotation with the uh, with the original text and yesterday evening during the Hackfest uh, I actually worked on making those optional so if you're very sure that you will get good translations from the model you can disable that uh, and so this is a little example from Wikipedia uh, from the machine translation article in German uh, and you can see uh, the humanity dream probably doesn't strike you as a particularly uh, idiomatic English phrase, maybe it's a dream of mankind or something like that. Um, but the next paragraph, uh, understanding a language without learning is an ancient dream of mankind. Uh, uh, this is something that you would, could probably uh, put in the English Wikipedia if there wasn't an already translation already. So in terms of UI, I first had uh, fairly large ambitions. Uh, so there's uh, the problem with neural networks in general is that they're kind of a black box. And whatever drops out of it, you have to <laughs> accept. And so uh, uh, there are, uh, there is research into explaining how the model arrives at its predictions. And so this is a, uh, uh, work uh, by Strobert at I uh, there in the uh, vicinity of the uh, uh, translation system that I use and for example they have uh, uh, not only the best translation which will be put out which will be the output of the translation but they also have the most probable alternatives uh, but the question here is is this a useful UI without intervention options by the user? If you can just look at it, but it doesn't, you don't have the option of saying, well, here I want to have uh, uh, something different all the time. Uh, I figured that it was not that useful, and so I didn't even try to implement a user interface for this in LibreOffice. Obviously, if you have ideas about how to make this function like this useful, I'd be very glad to uh, have a chat uh, because I want to make the extension as useful as possible. So who of you uh, knows a lot about neural networks? Yeah, very good. So it's not everyone. Um, one of the things uh, 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 that neural networks are supposed to do better than, say, a dictionary is uh, that you uh, have some context that you can consider and the traditional way of having this context is to have a neural network where you feed in one character at a time uh, more recently uh, if you've heard about some bird model that google trained or this open ai text generator that was too dangerous to be uh, disclosed uh, that made the news last year uh, then you then there's a new way and this is kind of an attention uh, mechanism where you have the original text is fed into an encoder and you have some vector representation and now the decoders they will go one word by one word but they can look at all the encoded vectors and this attention uh, will play a fairly neat role in the 
and the following because we can make good use of it uh, in our extension. And so what happens is that the decoder is fed kind of a token that says this little s that means go, it's the start token, and then it will generate the first output token, dea, uh, uh, and that will be fed back to the decoder, and so it will produce one word at a time. And so what we get is uh, uh, that we feed in like our sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and we get the translation, der schnelle braune fox sprang über den faulen Hund, but we also get those attention weights, which essentially are <coughs> mapped between the source text and the target text. Uh, and you can see that it's roughly lining up here on the diagonal, which means that the structure of the sentences are more or less the same, uh, but you also have some little thing that uh, it always looks at the end, which maybe is if you hypothesize that it somehow works like humans understand language, we usually have to read the full question before we give an answer to. And so it's maybe it's natural to look at the end. But what can we do with this attention map? Well, we can uh, take this in order to uh, format our translated text. If we have an emphasis, for example, we want to emphasize the quick, the word quick, uh, uh, then the attention map would tell us that schnelle, uh, 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 and probably also der, which is furious, but uh, that we would uh, have to emphasize der schnelle at the beginning of the sentence. And this is uh, what the extension does. Uh, we also need to keep the paragraph formatting so that you keep paragraph breaks and uh, headlines and things formatted. And we currently do this, or the extension does this, uh, by just translating paragraph by paragraph, and in fact, sentence by sentence. This is one of the other things. Uh, in order to make use of these translation models. Uh, so there is a library that I built on, uh, but this library needs the sentence, the text one sentence at a time. So you have a pre-processing step where you have to split the text into sentences, which can be tricky, and in particular it's not clear whether it works for all languages, so I wouldn't know. But to do the sentence splitting in Chinese, for example. <clears throat> so the two things that I used in building it, in addition to LibreOffice, of course, was uh, uh, a framework called PyTorch, uh, uh, which is one of the <coughs> largest uh, uh, AI frameworks uh, in addition to TensorFlow. Uh, uh, and I personally like it a lot, and uh, uh, this is where I contribute a lot, and I'm one of the core developers, one of the few independent ones. Uh, uh, and then there's a project uh, uh, OpenNMT, so it's Open Neural Machine Translation, uh, which is a quite comprehensive framework originally developed by the Neural Natural Language Processing Group at Harvard. Uh, and it's more a library application-like than many other of those machine translation models, which basically are, here's the code to accompany my paper on machine translation. <coughs> so this was a very nice building block to have. Uh, and with that, I, the extension was developed fairly quickly, but now the next question is, you have the extension, but it will not do anything for you unless you have a model. So who's impressed by translating German to English? <laughs> Two. So uh, apparently you would be more impressed by uh, having different language combinations. Uh, what would you need in order to train something like that? The first thing is you need example sentence pairs. Uh, so in order to train the uh, German to English or English to German model, uh, uh, I use four and a half million sentence pairs. 
probably for many other language combinations you don't have as many. Um, and this is actually uh, one of the uh, uh, fairly harsh limitations. Uh, and then you need uh, uh, one of those fancy GPU graphics cards. Uh, uh, so I used a gaming one that I ran for one or two weeks. Uh, and this is one of the weaknesses. So to train uh, one model, uh, uh, you run a GPU for two weeks, and this takes uh, 150 to 200 watts. So you've spent 30 to 70 kilowatt hours uh, on training the model. And if you compare this, so I have three children, and the three kids, my wife and I, and my GPU take about 2,400 kilowatt hours per year. So if I train 10 models, my wife will ask me what's up with the electricity bill. <laughs> uh, at least it's green power, but nonetheless. Uh, uh, and actually, I would like to work a bit to get this down, maybe half it or something like that. Get it down to a quarter. Um, then the steps that you take to train the models, you first have to prepare the vocabulary. Uh, and if you look very closely, uh, you saw that I don't actually feed words into the model, but word parts, which is kind of one of the fancy things you do in machine translation. But this is an easy part. Uh, then you have the training bit, which takes very long. Uh, and then you have an then you need to do an evaluation. You can try to do this automatically and get some score. Uh, uh, but in the end, you will have to just feed it a few sentences and see if it makes sense. And this is also why you need someone who actually speaks the language or the languages involved in the translation in order to train models. One other thing that one could want so I showed you an example translating Wikipedia, and this invariably, invariably works relatively well. Uh, but if you have a special domain, for example, you want to translate uh, emails within an automotive company, or you want to translate legal texts, you would do better if you specialize the general model to a legal German to English model, for example. Uh, and you would do this by running a few more training steps on a more specialized uh, uh, set of examples. Uh, and this is one of the next steps in developing the extension is to facilitate for the user to uh, actually run their own uh, model training. How many of you do have a GPU computer at home? So that's far from everyone, uh, uh, which is probably one of the things that limits adoption in the end. So I also wanted to uh, talk a bit about what I did to package the extension. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, Anna uh, already had a lot of hints of what I could do better. Uh, and if you have some more, uh, uh, I'd be most grateful. So the situation is that I have those powerful building blocks, PyTorch and OpenNMT, uh, but this comes at the cost that I have quite a few dependencies, and some dependencies will be just pure Python code, but some dependencies will also what is called in the Python language extensions, which are uh, <coughs> C or C++ modules that are compiled. Uh, so I have to find a way to provide those Python modules to uh, uh, the LibreOffice Python instance. And uh, my current solution is to build a simple OXT that lacks a lot of these dependencies. And then I install the extension into a fresh LibreOffice uh, install all the modules with uh, with the Python installation toolkit, uh, and then I copy over the folder uh, which contains the installed packages into the OXT zip file, and it increases the size by a factor 
uh, uh, five uh, uh, of the OXT, but uh, this leaves me with the problem, how can I automate the build? Well, because, uh, well, yeah, installing LibreOffice uh, and then installing packages into LibreOffice uh, is something that probably needs some work uh, to automate the build. And so one of my goals here to make this easier would be to shed some of the dependencies and one can also think about uh, moving the extension from Python to C++ in order to make it simpler. Uh, uh, and the neural network bits would lend themselves quite natural to do that, naturally to do that. But if you have ideas, uh, I'd be most grateful. So there's uh, two more things in UI that, uh, uh, that I needed to do, and I'll just show it really quick. So you need to install it as an extension. This works just like for every extension. Um, so this is quite nice. Uh, and then you have to install those language models or translation models. And what I did was I put a new uh, uh, configuration page in the uh, translation in the language settings. Uh, and you can download the translation model as a zip file and then when you hit new you get a file dialog where you need to uh, put in the path which I thought was a relatively reasonable way to distribute those uh, uh, models but if we wanted to do this at scale uh, I mean, how many languages does LibreOffice support? Only about 30. 30, yeah. yeah. So if you if you wanted to have translation models for that, the first thing is can you really have 30 times 29 uh, uh, translation models? Uh, uh, and the next question would be would you want to set up a central repository for translation models or how would you uh, uh, best translate those and make them available to So here's my questions for you. So how much uh, uh, is machine translation a desirable standard feature that you would want to have in the product? Uh, uh, and you know that, for example, uh, uh, Chrome, the Google browser that has a little translate this page thing that pops up whenever you uh, look at a page in a foreign language. Uh, is there a good way to work on something else than writer text? So machine translation, in my opinion, would best when you feed it sentences. So writer was kind of a natural match, but one could think about also having it, for example, in, in press. Uh, but I wouldn't know how to do that yet. Uh, is there interest in more language, in supporting more languages here from a user perspective, also from providing your own language models and what can, what size of language model would be acceptable. So the model that I trained came out at about a gigabyte for the translation model. Um, and there's a few ideas how to get this smaller, uh, uh, at least by a factor of two again, but still uh, it would be fairly large even compared to the not entirely trivial amount of space that the office itself takes. <laughs> I'll have a written quiz on this at the end. <laughs> okay, so other ideas to make this more useful would be a, a better integration with Libre, with a writer. Um, so, for example, one of the things that I don't do yet, which might be obvious, would be to set, set the language property uh, uh, after translation. Um, and how many of you would consider training your own language model if you had an easy script? Okay, so that's, uh, that's a good, good part of the audience. So it's not everyone, but maybe a third. Uh, uh, and so I 
this would be mostly something that you don't do from within LibreOffice, but where you need to uh, have some sort of well-written instructions. Uh, there's an initiative uh, that does collect open parallel corpora, open examples of, uh, of, of sentence pairs, and incidentally, one of the sources they have is uh, user interface translations. Uh, so, uh, uh, one could indeed consider whether one can also take bits of the LibreOffice documentation in order to see such a translation model. Yeah, and then one can try to find things in, uh, in the, uh, from the current research. Uh, so there's a fairly influential conference every year that's called WMT. Uh, uh, and they regularly have challenges where you're supposed to uh, train models or achieve certain tasks. And so, for example, one of the uh, uh, currently one of the challenges is automatic filtering of noisy corpora. If you have something where you don't know, well, is this really a good uh, example of pairs, or are there mismatches and things? Uh, uh, they work on uh, detecting which pairs are good to feed into a model and which are not. And obviously one of the other questions one might have is can we use traditional dictionaries? Because currently we just throw all these sentences into the model and then it learns something, but there's not much of an opportunity to kind of say, well, this particular word should correspond to this other particular word like you would have in a dictionary. And of course, any other ideas you have uh, uh, on this, uh, I'd be very, very interested. So with this, uh, uh, my part of the, of the talk would be, uh, it's done.